What's up, guys? You are listening to HVAC Masters of the Hustle podcast, and this is your host, J Dub Moneymaker. And welcome to episode 98, you guys. First off, I want to say thank you for everyone that reaches out every week and truly tells me how this podcast brings you and your company to the next level. And for all my new listeners out there, make sure you guys smash the subscribe button because like I said, this podcast is helping thousands and thousands and thousands of people get to that next level. And for my listeners that have not checked out the website yet or business owners or anyone out there, make sure you guys go. I'm going to go ahead and drop the link at the bottom. It's going to be floating across but go ahead and go to www.hvacmastersofthehustle.com. There you could check out my on-site trainings. Any questions that you guys have, you guys could shoot me a message. But other than that, I'm super excited about this podcast that we have today. I believe that everyone has a Spartan in them. It's my job, my duty, and my obligation to bring that out in you. And, uh, you know, he's been on the podcast before. He's no stranger. Let's go ahead and welcome Caleb Pasqua to the hot seat. How you doing, brother? Oh, oh, got you muted real quick. Hang on. Sorry. There we go. How you doing, brother? Good, man. Nice to see you again. Absolutely. So tell my listeners that didn't maybe catch you on the earlier episode a little bit about yourself and how you got into the heat and air industry because i knew you kind of just fell into it it wasn't planned yeah i mean the story's kind of long and i'd have to go back to the previous episode to share all that we don't we don't but, we don't got it we don't got to get into the long part just a little speed yeah. up uh the short version is it's so hard for me to go short um the short version is i had my own company things didn't go so well and I heard from a friend that heating and air market, and this was so surprising too. It's like a little hidden treasure out there. And he's making good money. And he told me the kind of money he was making. So I'm like, mm, I'll give it a shot. So I started, uh, didn't know anything about heating and air. Didn't even know how to program my thermostat. And I wanted to get into sales. That wasn't uh, possible. So they started me in service and I learned quickly from there. Uh, sold the maintenance program, was the best at that and then try to get into the sales department. And they said no at first. So I kept kicking down different doors and found my way in <laughs> and uh, climbed straight to the top as soon as I got in. So, yeah. Oh, man. And, and for my listeners, I want you guys to understand you guys are in for a great episode on the podcast right now. I mean, Caleb, it's an honor for you to be in the hot seat, you guys. I've had the opportunity to work with this guy. And I mean, he's just a different caliber. He's a different piece. I talk about knowing your inner Spartan and your inner beast. I mean, you definitely know that. <laughs> I'll mm -hmm. tell you that, man. <laughs> so let's talk about, you know, going into an appointment because for my listeners out there, Caleb just hit 4 million this year. So congratulations. Caleb has an average ticket of what? 18, 19,000. Right now, I don't even know. <laughs> and, and he's closing percentage is freaking like 57 to 63 percent. Some months it's in the 80s, the high 70s. So, so what is your secret, man? When you go into these appointments as a comfort advisor, okay, how are you dissecting these calls? How are you going in there mentally? Uh, it's it's the mental game is the most important part because. Before you get into a call, you can know all the strategies, you can know all the closing techniques and everything else. But if you don't have the right mindset, it it doesn't matter what you, what you know. I I think of it like um I don't know if you watch Formula One racing or any kind of racing, you can have like an amazing car out there. It can it can go over two hundred miles an hour, but if you don't have the right mindset, and if you're not fearless going into that that race it doesn't matter how fast the car is. It doesn't matter what kind of te techniques you have. It, you're not going to win the race. So having the right mindset along with the right strategies for sales is, is important, but I'd say more importantly, the mindset. Absolutely. And going into a call because you run a lot of tech turnovers as a comfort advisor, 
what are you looking for as a comfort advisor, as a good turnover from your technician for maybe some technicians listening to the podcast out there? What are you looking uh, for? I like rapport building. I could always tell when I walk into a house and the customer is already talking highly of the technician. When the tech that one of the things I hear the customer, because what the t customer tells me is like the feedback when they tell me what they like, right? And that consistency that I hear a lot is going to be that they're very, very thorough and that they took their time. So they're there for a long time. They're personable and they just, they trusted them. So mm -hmm. it's really taking your time out there, not rushing through the call, not spending all your time in front of the, the equipment and not building any kind of rapport or relationship with the customer. And the thing is, is, you have to let them see what you're doing as well, because you can spend, you know, be doing an amazing job up there. But if you're not taking before and after pictures, if you're not taking video, if you're not bringing equipment down and show them how dirty it is or before and after you clean it, those are, they, they, they only know what they're seeing. So they want to hear the vacuum going. They want to see you, you know, getting kind of dirty, showing before and after pictures and, and taking blower motors down so they can see that. That's what makes a huge difference on our end when we go in for a sales appointment. And I like that you said that because I've had multiple technicians in the prior episodes on the podcast talk about the importance of really pulling that blower wheel, taking that out, showing the homeowner because people don't do that part of their service, right? They use that opportunity companies as an upsell. What's the importance of actually doing that every single call, Kayla, building that rapport, taking that blower wheel out, pulling the heat exchangers? Well, some say it's good because you want the customer to see it, which is so, so important. But I think for a personal mindset, I think it's even more important because when you go in there and you have an integrity of doing the right thing for the customer and you're taking your time to pull out a dirty blower motor and cleaning it on every single one, you're building a character and you're honoring yourself, knowing that you're doing the best possible job every single time you go into a call. And it's not about just like showing off in front of the customer saying, oh, can you see me clean this? But knowing in the level of integrity in your own heart, knowing that you're doing, you're doing everything you can to help the customer out. Cause then it's genuine. You don't need, the thing is you don't need like, you know, fancy sales techniques or no body language. If you truly love and honor your customer and respect them, that stuff is just a byproduct. So if you, if you really honor your customer and you want to do what's best for them, the body language and everything else is just, just going to be just second nature. You don't need to fake that. So I think the biggest thing is just your highest level of integrity, doing the right thing for the customer. Every single time you go into a call is most important. So you want to make sure that you're doing that for yourself. You're honoring your, your own standards by cleaning that, doing the things that are kind of tough. Mm -hmm. I think that's most important. And talking, bringing it back a little bit at the importance of breaking down the homeowner's walls at the beginning of the appointment, right? We're getting judged mm -hmm. within five seconds of knocking on that door and then yeah, absolutely. Uh, answering. Yep. So what's the importance of really breaking down the walls right there? What are some things that Caleb does in that initial meet and greet right there? Well, it's, it's, you know, some of the things that you say is going to be important, but most importantly, it's those things that you don't see, don't say it's the things that the customer sees. It's those snap judgments. Like you say, when a customer sees you immediately, even before you even get there, when you pull up, if you're, you know, fumbling over yourself, trying to find your, your paperwork, trying to find your tablet or trying to find your booties mm -hmm. in the back of the, the van, those are all things that customers can see. And again, it's more important for you. You want to be prepared before you go into a call. But even if a customer is watching you and saying like, you're just kind of fumbling, even if they don't consciously know it, you just look like you're kind of not prepared for the call. So if you, if you go into the call completely prepared, like I prep completely before I get to the call, I roll up both hands on the steering wheel, no sunglasses on, no music on, pull up swiftly, get out and walk straight up to the door, knock, put everything down. So I have nothing in my hands. And then from there, my, for me, I know the psychology of what people are looking for. Like in, in a general sense, people like someone who's going to be, you know, clean, healthy looking, vital, someone who's emitting energy instead of pulling energy in. And mm -hmm. you have to understand that when you're, as soon as you knock on the door, just those, those subtle little subconscious things are going to make like the world of a difference. For example, just smiling. I don't smile when they open the door. I'm not already smiling. I smile upon eye contact. So it's my reaction to seeing their eyes that makes me smile. So it's just little subtle things like that. I say a certain distance away from the door, I'm clean cut, everything, like I've checked myself, I'm good to go. And, you know, shoulders up, head up and voice tone. 
all of it. I mean, it, it, it so much of it, it matters. So Tonality much. is huge in these. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can't be aggressive. You can't be super loud. You got to be mm -hmm. very, uh, you know, but you still got to, you got to have a good tonality, but you also got to take dominance right away. Right. You can't so, allow. The well, it's so, uh -huh, go ahead. So, so that's the important part. This is the, that's the fun part about sales is because you don't know what you're going into and you need to be able to get that live feedback. So you know exactly how to adapt yourself to the situation. Because I'll have a certain voice tone depending on the individual answering the door. Like if there's if their shoulders are rolled in and they're just like kind of heads down and they're more timid, I'm I'm going to kind of tone it back a little bit on my voice tone and I'm going to get a little bit softer. If someone's going to be more type A personality, then then I'm gonna I can dance with them too. So it's really and and think of you know, talking about a dance, you don't want to walk in, you know trying to do a tango when they're trying to do salsa, right? You want, you want to get on the same <laughs> dance as them. So that way you guys can, can have a good time. So, Absolutely. Oh, knowing your, knowing your customers and, uh, getting that feedback. That's why it's so important to understand that live feedback of what you're getting. But yeah, sometimes, yeah. yes, definitely have to drive them. You have to lead them sometimes as well. And the Absolutely. drivers like that. That's, that's the thing that the, the, you know, the guys who are like real strong drivers, they want a, another strong driver in return. Because if I have a stack of, you know, a hundred thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars in my in my hand right now, I'm gonna give it to someone that can battle me or outbeat me. I'm not gonna get give it to someone who I can punk around. Because if I if I give that, you know, fifty grand to somebody who I can punk around, what are the chances of them keeping my money safe? Very slim Absolutely. to none. So Absolutely. it's so it's kind of a power game there. And talking a little bit about, you know, uh when we work together, you would always talk about a story about when you go into a house, you know, as a company, we're only allowed a certain amount of installs per month, right? But your mm -hmm. mindset as comfort advisors, they go out there, it's more of, hey, what can I do to earn your business, right? But when yeah. Caleb goes mm -hmm. out there, it's, hey, what, what are you going to do to be one of my clients to fill one of those spots? Can yeah. you talk kind of about that mindset that you have? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, not coming from an ignorant place. It's, it's again, honoring yourself, your ability and your team as well. You want to make sure that the individual that you're getting in a relationship with is going to be worth it because you're going to be in a relationship with the company, with that person and the company for the next 20 years. So if you wouldn't be getting in a, in a bad relationship or choosing someone who's not going to be, you know, meeting you at least halfway to get in a relationship, you don't want to be chasing them. You don't want them to be, you know, just having all the power being like, you know, I guess I'll choose you. It's like, yeah, that's not good enough. I don't want to spend my life or my next 20 years with someone who's just saying like, I'll be good enough. I want to make sure that I'm kind of hundred percent and they're coming hundred percent as well. And then make sure that, you know, it's just a, it's a good person that you want to do business with. Because if you are giving it your all, if you're doing everything possible and answering your phone whenever they call, following up with them, you want to make sure that it's a good customer. The last thing you want is someone who's going to just not be any good, any fun to deal with. So I'm looking for people well, who are a lot like me, really. I got to ask you, Caleb, because you've been a sales manager at Bell Brothers, one of the biggest companies in California. Uh, what does it take to be a good comfort advisor? <laughs> It depends on what do you mean? Like in sales numbers, are you talking about in not, general? Not just, or? just general overall picture. What What is the idea comfort advisor? Uh, being authentic, I think. Because what I loved about all my guys on the team and, and some gals too, is they they honored themselves and they didn't try to go into a call trying to be someone else. And perhaps mm -hmm. when they got out of training, they tried to, but I'd always let them know. It's like, Hey, you know what? Like the biggest, if you're funny, you know, you can be funny in the call. If you, if you're more of like a more kind of shy, timid guy, but, and you want to get down to business, which is more like my, my, you know, kind of game mm -hmm. that's then honor that be authentic. That's the, te the rep, the reps that are authentic and don't try to be someone they're not, I think are some of the best for sure. Because again, it's a subconscious, you know, the energy that you that you emit that homeowners pick up on and they, they just know that you're just being genuine i think that's okay. the biggest thing what's the biggest thing that separates 
you know, a comfort advisor from their competitors, what, what's a good way that they could talk about being different? Well, well, everyone has their own, their own ways about going about that. For me, I don't like, I don't care who's coming out. I don't care that, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm getting another estimate. Okay, great. Like, I don't care. I don't ask who it is. It doesn't matter. I look at what I do and the best service that I can provide for my customer. And I know my level of ability and my heart that I, and energy that I put into every single customer. So that's what I, that's, that's my job is to focus on myself and what I'm going to do for my customer. And when I do that and someone else comes behind me, there's going to be a clear difference every single time because, because my focus is in the right area, which is honoring that customer. And whether they choose me or not, I think that's one of the biggest secrets too, is like, mm -hmm. I don't care whether they choose me or not. I want to make sure that I am providing the best service because that's who I want coming in my house. I don't want someone coming in and being nice just because they want my money. I want someone who comes in is going to honor their character of just being a good person and is willing to do whatever they can to help me out. So that's what I see. And that's what I want. And if someone to come in my house and that's what I, that's what I give to my customers. So Absolutely. to make, make me different. I mean, I do a lot of things different apparently, because that's what all the customers tell me when they call me and say, Hey, you know what? We want to choose you because of this, this, and this, and this, and this. And I say, fantastic. Cool. And, and honestly, if they didn't choose me, then, then that's perfect too. I don't really don't, I don't care. But the, the thing about it is, is they choose you because you give them that extra effort. You build that value. You, you build that rapport, right? They see yeah. where that service is coming from because at the end of the day, you're going against companies, Caleb, that, you know, you're five, six, seven, maybe $10,000 higher, right? Yeah. But <laughs> what, what is it that Caleb, because when I go out to companies, I always hear we're the highest company, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I never let that affect me. And I know you don't let it affect you when you are the highest company. I mean, how, are, how does Caleb build that value right there to show that there's a five, 10,000, 8,000, maybe $3,000 difference. It's not like I, like I always taught in my training is like, it's, you know, people's ask like, what's your secret? It's like, my secret is like a toothpick. I think I said, I told you just before, it's like, it's like one toothpick alone, it, you snap, break it in half, no big deal, but you get thousands of toothpicks and you, you, you know, woven, you weave them together. It's strong. It's really strong. And I think to answer your question, it's a lot of little things that add up to be just strong as steel. And it's, it's that moment I walk up. It's my confidence when I walk, walk up, it's how I honor and respect their home. It's how I sit down and genuinely listen to what they have to say, take notes repeat the notes back to them to make sure we're on the same page, oh, let them know exactly right what I'm going to be doing during my process there, how long it's going to take and make sure that we're both committed to the amount of time that we're going to give. Cause if I have another appointment, I'm going to let them know I'm not going to rush this process. I got to be honest with you. I have two other appointments right after this and I will do half of my process today by getting all my measurements, getting all the dirty work, but, but I need to honor you and your family and your time and to make sure that you're getting the best possible job in the end. So I'm going to reset this call to come back at another time. Cause the last thing I want to do is rush this project. And even if you were to say, you know what, I don't care. Here's a check for, you know, 50 grand. I'm going to say, Hey, I always make sure that every single one of my jobs is going to be done to perfection. And the only way I can do that is by taking my time and really honoring what I do. And this is the amount of time it takes. So if I, if we don't have that amount of time, then, then we, we can't do business or I'm going to come back and earn your business the right way, either way. So. Absolutely. Right. And not shortcutting your process just to get a sell, even yeah. though it might be an easy lay down sell, right? It's whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Let's pump the brakes because who knows something might fall out in the in middle of the install, or maybe we said something, you know, in the appointment that they might thought that another company said, and it wasn't even part of our agreement, but something happened the day of the install, right? We have to be there to support and make sure that whatever is promised gets delivered. We can't be well, Uncle Buck in the truck. You see our tail lights and never see us again. Yeah, and you, because that's you want to make sure that you go through. They know what they're getting. I mean, even if they're willing to like say, you know, yeah, let's let's just get this done. Obviously, I'm not going to just patronize them and stay for three hours and go over every single little detail. But I'm going to go through a, like everything that they need to know. Because I, I'm sure everyone listening or anyone out there who sells who sold before or is selling now, 
that when you don't talk about stuff, things start coming up. Like you said, at the end, they say, you know what? I just got a text. My brother's coming over. My brother said I should get multiple estimates. Now you're like, oh, well, let me talk about like what we do and how we do it and the guarantees and material and how we go about our install and tuning and calibrating. Mm -hmm. It's like now, now you're just, you've, as soon as you're trying to, you know, talk to them after the fact, after you miss that point and they have to I ask, now you're on defense. That's, that's the problem. So you always want to make sure you're on offense and not def trying to defend yourself by backing up. I like that metaphor right there. Don't be on defense. Always stay on offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Caleb talking more about, you know, post-closing the importance of post-closing, right? Cause a lot of people, especially right now off season, right? There's a mm -hmm. lot of people getting multiple estimates and maybe they might be closing the deal or happily involving a client, but they're not having a strong post close. What are your thoughts on post close and what are some techniques that you have used that, that help you? Share with me a little bit more exactly what you mean by that. So post close, for instance, one thing I do is after I happily involve a client, right? I like to ask for three things that ended up making them choose me today. Right. Mm -hmm. So if they end up calling to cancel, I could refresh their memory. Hey, you know, these are the three reasons why you ended up moving forward with me that day. So it helps kind of plant that seed. Or sometimes you say, Hey, you know, this is a huge purchase. You know, homeowners only do this once or twice in their life. Right. So with that being said, buyer's remorse kicks in. Do you educate homeowners about buyer's remorse and things like that? Or do you not mention stuff like that? No, I mean, I very rarely do I have to, and I get very, okay. very rare cancellations. I, again, if, cause I do a lot of takeaways during my process and make sure because I'm not, I'm not always trying to like earn their business. I switch, I, you know, flip the script and ask them, you know, you know, like, like you said earlier, you know, we, we could install, we, we install say 35 to 4,000 jobs a year, but we see, you know, almost 10,000. So we have to be picky and choosy who we choose to do business with. And frankly, we're just looking for people who are a lot like us, you know, honest, fun to deal with, just, just easy, good people. That's, that's what we're looking for. I mean, I know what you're looking for in a contractor. You're looking for on time, reliability, you know, good reputation, people with a high level of integrity. They're going to do the right thing, even that when you're not looking and make sure that the job's going to be done to perfection. I'm, I know what you're looking for, but what would make you a good customer for, you know, Bell Brothers? What would make you a good customer for us? And then, then, you know, people are like, well, you know, we, yeah, you know, we always pay on time or whatever the case may be. I built a lot of rapport by that time because asking, you know, questions like that or making comments like that too early on can really make you look like you're like an arrogant a-hole, you know? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you built up <laughs> the intuition to know when you can drop, you know, lines like that. But once you do, it's very good because you want to make sure that you're, you're doing some takeaways that you're not always chasing because by the end now it's, now it's a good mutual relationship. And that's what I'm talking about. Like they have to come, you know, a hundred percent and I'll come a hundred percent too. So that way we can, we can get in this relationship together because if you start off a relationship, like, you know, any kind of relationship, if you start off a relationship with a certain characteristic and then, you know, you get together and later on you start switching and you start having a different characteristic, it's not authentic. And then now mm -hmm. they're going to hold you to that specific judgment. Like say, yep. for example, if you like, you know, wanted a woo a girl and you're just all into a binder, all kinds of stuff, just because you wanted to date her, then you start yep. dating her. And then from there, that's not your real characteristic. You just did that to date her. And then you stop doing those things. Now she's going to hold those expectations to you. You're like, Hey, you don't buy me flowers anymore. you don't take me this. You don't take me that. And then you get frustrated. It's like, well, the fact of the matter is you only did that to, you know, you know, get her and, and to date her. The same thing goes with the customers as well. If you're sitting there chasing, 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 and they're just sitting back like, yeah, well, what else you got? Well, how many, how much more discount can I get? Then from there, that's, that's the, that's the foundation of the relationship. Then you're, you've set that characteristic of you're always chasing. So you always want to make sure that you do some takeaways, especially with pricing too. I establish, you know, there's a certain method that I have very, very strategic method that I go through and I confirm, I ask budget, get the budget out of them. And then from there we go over system options. And then I talk about those specific systems that they're choosing, what those price ranges are. And if it's not congruent with the price that they chose earlier, I let them know and say, Hey, you know what? That two stage 16 sear is a great system. And uh, so many people choose that, especially right now with energy prices going up. 
-hmm. but earlier you said your budget your budget was between x and x that system right there is 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 nice it's an amazing system however it's about three thousand dollars over the budget that you set or told me earlier so one of two things has to happen here either we go to the other the lesser seer 15 seer system or you prove to me how that three thousand dollars is now going to be affordable where earlier you said it wasn't and then I sit there and then they say, well, you know, yeah, no, we, we can afford that. Okay. And again, earlier I told you that I was going to do everything possible and make sure that I'm going to be very respectful and honor you guys. I want to make sure that this isn't something that you're just excited about now and regret sp spending money on later. So share with me exactly how, and again, I just want to make sure I can go home and sleep on a bed of integrity. How, how exactly I mean, is you're, that? You're how, really how, making them buy into it. Yeah. So how is that $3,000 just affordable? I just really want to make sure that this is because I know, I mean, I know this is a system I would pick and I know that this system is going to make up the difference like that as far as energy savings. And I know it's going to pay for mm -hmm. itself, but again, it it is going to be $5 more a month. I mean, share with me, how is that going to be affordable? Tell me, you know, and I really, then they start selling themselves like, no, 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 it's perfect. We can definitely do that. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Cause earlier I said I was going to fit a system within your budget. And I just want to make sure you're making the right decision. Is that as you feel you are? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Then let's keep moving forward. So and I mm -hmm. primed all that before and I let him know what my what I'm going to be doing for them. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to honor my side. So usually by the time I'm finished explaining how systems work and the efficiency differences, then from there, they always want the one that's more efficient, which is always going to be a little bit more than what they thought it was going to be. So I always want to make sure I honor their budget. And that's, I mean, is it's authentic, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. being real. And I'm just saying, hey, early you said you told me your budget was between 15 to 18. This system right here is 24. I just want to make sure that you're not, you know, spending money you don't have. Absolutely. So, and the key yeah. part of that is actually getting that budget out of the homeowner, right? I mean, a lot of us mm -hmm. as com comfort advisors, sales professionals, whatever you want to call us, a lot of us are, are really scared to actually go in there and ask for a budget, right? Because maybe they might be an overpriced company and their prices are 15, 20,000, right? And their last system yeah. that they bought 15 years ago was 6,000, right? They're really scared to ask that question. But Caleb, the importance of really asking that, right? And finding that out so we can use that towards our ammunition is very key. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, again, it, not so much ammunition. I guess you could look at it that way, but just honoring the customer's budget. That's really what it is. And if they don't have realistic expectations, Tool, tools for our mind. arsenal. What's that? Tools for our arsenal. Yeah. So we yeah. can bring them back to what they've told us. Yeah. So, I mean, getting that budget so, so important. It, it really is. And you get so much out of it. And I, again, I used to sweat bullets asking that. And I used to be like timid, but guess what? Like, I don't care. Like I may be scared to ask, but I'm still going to ask. And then I just mm -hmm. worked it to perfection. I rescripted it, went back out there, asked a different way that fell flat on his face. And then I looked stupid. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> went back to the drawing board, redid the scripting, went back out there. And that's the, that's the methodology that I go through is like, I don't just write stuff because it sounds good. I actually use it in out in the field, take notes. As soon as I get out of the call, Rescript it, rewrite it, and go back in there and keep trying it again and again and again until I actually get it, get something that I really like and get really good feedback from. So I ask Absolutely. it, and and your your body tone, how you ask, is so dang important too. And your voice tone, if your voice tone's shuddering, if you ask and you oh. don't care, that comes across your voice. Your yeah, it's just like your tonality is just it's on point. Oh, absolutely. And, and if you sound nervous, your voice will sound nervous. If you're thinking that you're going to be nervous, right? I can't tell you how <laughs> yeah. many times I ride along with people and I'm on the East coast and, you know, I hear it all the time where people are like, well, you live in California. That's why your average ticket's 19,000. It's like, no, I do this everywhere. It's just instilling confidence when I say the message, when I say that number, it's like, no, we sell this system every day for 17,000, 20,000, 25,000. Mm -hmm. You got to make it come across like it's something that happens every day. And you can't be like 14,000. <laughs> no, <laughs> and so so an upward voice inflection is going to be a question, right? So it's just like, yeah, we have some systems that are around 14,000 and then and it's like <laughs> yeah. it's almost as if you're asking the customer and they're just like uh, yeah. uh okay uh, yeah. yeah is that a question okay yeah 
So tonality. And for me, like that's like where body language comes in. I sit back, you know, like usually when I, when I come in and I sit down, I kind of sit back and, you know, put my arm back and say, Hey, so share with me a little bit about what's going on, what I can do to help out. Mm -hmm. Then from there, they start talking and we just, you know, kind of go from there. And they, and being authentic, another reason why it's so important is because like you're congruent with all your questioning, all your comments and everything else. So when it comes down to like those difficult questions, they're not really difficult questions because you're asking in the same manner as you did when you said, Hey, so what's your dog's name? Hey, so what budget do you have set aside for a project like this? Mm -hmm. Like it's the same. It's just, you're just being very congruent. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. And talking about, you know, what you have going on, because you got some really good things in the making. Um, you're wearing your, your logo as well on your t-shirt. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about your logo, the polo that you're wearing? Because last time you were on the podcast, you were talking about that you loved helping people, right? That's something that you're passionate about. Yeah. Well, Caleb's taking that step forward. Caleb, talk about what you're doing now. Uh, so I started a company called Strategic HVAC Sales. And I work with any sales professionals out there that want to get down into the depth of what, what they're truly capable of doing and helping them get, get out of their own way. And it's so funny because I... Like when I, when I, when I'm out there selling, like it's, it's gratifying and I'm helping people out, but it's like, for me, especially with the challenges that I've had in life, there's so much more depth in life as far as overcoming challenges, personal challenges. Like I think everyone has have challenges out there. I know I have in life and just selling stuff in and of itself is, is good, but helping someone change their life is even better. So I've, I've went through, I mean, for years now, I've always been interested in psychology, which is probably one of the things that makes me okay at sales. Right. And I, th I have brought that into my sales game, but now I'm bringing it into helping people better themselves and better their sales game as well. So it's just like a, a full, like just kind of shift in mindset and energy in an individual, because if they can go home and be a, just an amazing person to their spouses and their kids and their mom and dad and their uncles and just the, their neighbors and friends and everything else. And at the same time, progress in the workplace and be the best out there that they can be and make a lot of money and honor a lot of customers and treat them right because the customers deserve it. I mean, that's why would you not want to do that? And if you're capable of doing that, then why wouldn't you, why would you, why would you sit on your hands and not go out there and help people out? So it's like, for me, I was born to help people out. That's just, I, I just came to terms. It's like, you know what? That's just what I do. That's what I'm good at. And what's that, what I just, I don't, I wake up early in the morning, just like passionate about helping somebody out. So, so the, yeah, so that's what I've dedicated my time to is just to see what I can do to help people out. And how long ago did you start this uh, journey? Uh, it's been, it's been about not too long, about three, four months, about four months now. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing everything that you have. How can my listeners reach out to you if they have any questions? So you can email me at Caleb at strategichvacsales.com. And uh, I'm going to be having a, I just recorded my first podcast on going from fear to fearless, which is going to be a really good episode. Like I'm super stoked about it. It sounds really good. So I'm going to be posting that up too. So by the time this airs, uh, mine will be airing as well. So nice, nice. And that's so the mindset. And that's, that's what it comes down to. Cause it's, man, it's, it's amazing. Like once you start getting out there and start talking to people, it's amazing how many people that you can actually help. Like I just, just always just kind of mind my own business and did what I did. And, but man, so many people out there, they struggle and they have a hard time. And that some, sometimes they just end up not liking sales or they don't like what they're doing because they made it a lot harder than they, they really want to. So mm -hmm. helping people move about like just freely and sell and do good and be, be happy about it and develop themselves in a way that really helps contribute to the community and their customers and their family. Like I said, it's like, it's, it's really rewarding just to see people have that shift in life and make themselves a better person. Absolutely. So, and, and so, so, so as far as coaching, 
you know, went through different programs, worked with, you know, the Tony Robbins foundation and everything mm -hmm. else to really just take my, the psychological game to a whole different level of how can I really just like change people like that? How can I take them from where they are to where they want to be? And it's not trying to change people on my mindset being like, oh, you should be doing this. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. If you want to just chill and be like just average, then dude, if that's you, then that's awesome. Do what you want to do. But if you are average and you want to do better, but you don't know how to take the necessary steps to do that, that's where I come in. That's where I come in to help them elevate themselves and take the take those necessary steps. I look at it as like, if you're traveling down the freeway and you got a fast lane, you got a slow lane. If you've ever been in the slow lane, you want to merge into the fast lane and get going. But for whatever reason, there's so many cars, you can't find a way to get over. You have those sticking points where you're trying to find a strategy to maneuver your car into the fast lane so you can get on like the rest of everybody else. But there's just something always in your way and you see it. That's what I'm there to help strategically help you open up those gaps merge your way in and get on that fast lane to life. And sometimes we try to merge over. And I think we've all experienced this. We try to merge over. And then next thing you know, someone honks at us. You thought the, the, the lane was clear to merge into the fast lane. But when you started to merge, there's a car there and it was in your blind spot. So then we move up a little bit. We try to move over again. And then again, something's in our blind spot. So we have a lot of blind spots in our in life as well, where we want to progress and get into the fast lane and progress in life. But something that we don't even know is blocking us and we don't, we can't figure it out. So sometimes we know what's blocking us. We know our fears. We know what situations that we need to overcome, whatever bad habits. And sometimes we don't know, we just feel stuck. Either way, I'm there to strategically help them move over and get into the fast lane and progress in life in, er in any area in life, not just selling a shitload of calls. So, so what's your, as you're growing this and everything, because it's new, right? What is your goal mm -hmm. with this within the next year or two? Where do you want to see this? Because obviously you're passionate just, about helping people. Yeah, I get I get chills just thinking about it. Like honestly, man, just like helping is like just just a, a huge just arena of people. And I don't care I don't care how I get there. I don't care if I look like an idiot. I don't care if I am if I am an idiot. I don't care. I'm dedicating myself my abilities, my skills, my love, and just my level of integrity to, to people out there. Like seriously, helping people out in any way possible, it's just, they deserve it, man. Like seriously, like the more you talk to people, the more you understand people, like you, the more you love them. Like the more you understand that you're, they're just like, we're all, we're all humans and we'd have this very short period of life and to waste it and to just, I mean, five years, two years goes by like that. And next oh, thing absolutely. you know, you think about, it's like, man, if I would have made that move back then, I would have been right here now. And there's just, there's excuses. There's things that are blocking them and they just, they can't get out of it. And I know exactly how it feels. And that's why I think I want to help people out so much is because I know exactly how that feels. I know how it feels to be stuck. I know how it feels to just have, have guilt in life and just like, just, just a lot of bad emotions. But I broke through, I broke through that because the thing is like what, I don't know how, but just whatever tried to block me in life, I've always broken through. I always have broken through. I'm always fearless about it. And even if I, if I do have some fear, it doesn't stop me. That's the difference. It's okay to be scared. Just don't let the, the fear stop you from moving forward. So, and it's really the resistance in life that I think it, that makes people stronger. So it's like, they realize that maybe not when they're in the midst of trying to carry that burden, but once they gain the strength to carry it on, it's light as a feather. And they look back and you're like, you know what? I wouldn't have be, I'm not, I wouldn't be as strong as I am right now if I didn't have that burden to carry before. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Caleb, I'm excited to see what you do, brother. I got listeners, as you know, from business owners, dispatchers, installers, comfort advisors, service technicians. What would you like for them to get out of this episode of HVAC Masters of the Hustle? I don't know, whatever they want to get out of it. <laughs> no, nah, like seriously, like you're an amazing person. That's what, that's what I want them, want them to get. It's like, you're just, you don't understand your, your truest potential. You don't understand how amazing you are and what you're capable of. Like you can make anything happen, anything happen in your life. Nothing has to stop you. 
and I know how it is to, to, to maybe grow up poor and feel like you just have that poor man's mindset. Well, you'll never get to the very top. Dude, that's bullshit. You can. There's absolutely you can you can have a five million dollar company, a ten million dollar company, and be like, man, like fifty million dollar company would be great. You can get it. And that's the difference of like wishing and like, yeah, that would be great to knowing with all your heart mm-hmm. that you are a fifty million dollar company. And yeah. you may only be a five million dollar company now, but when you have a mindset of a fifty million dollar company, it's things start to happen like that. Because you you know it to be true. It's not just like a forward thinking, like it will come true someday. It's like, dude, it has to come true now in your mindset before you can make that come true. So, Absolutely. yeah, I, I, you have so much nuggets and, you know, value that you're delivering in this podcast, brother. It's always a pleasure to have you in the hot seat. I greatly appreciate it. And I cannot wait to hear your podcast. As you said, episode one will be air- airing within the next couple of weeks here. So uh, make sure all my listeners check it out. Strategic HVAC, right? Yep. St- strategic HVAC sales. There we go, baby. So check it out. You guys give him some love. And if you guys have any questions, you guys want him on site, you guys want to do some online training, hit him up as he lets you know what his email was. Thanks for being a guest, brother. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Pleasure. Thank you.